We've got an assembled group here that uh, I'm proud to be friends with. On my left is Mike Sokol, who's an electrical uh, specialist. He's an electrical engineer. Anything to do with electricity, with campgrounds, RVs. He's an audio electrical specialist as well. And Chris Doherty here on my right, who is a certified, are you master certified? Certified. Ma certified RV technician with a mobile operation. And Chris, where are you out of? Springfield, Massachusetts. So you have a mobile group and you actually go into RV campgrounds and do repairs and troubleshooting? Absolutely. And we also do a lot of other uh, events with exhibitors. So that's uh, one of our specialties also. Very good. Very good. Well, we're here today to talk a little bit about electricity. You saw on the table here in front of us a whole array of electrical devices that we use for testing uh, either power sources or receptacles inside of RVs. And one of these little testers is this little guy right here. This is a very common apparatus. It's a, what's called a three light tester. We've all seen these. Now, Mike, you have an interesting concept that this might not be accurate. Yeah, and it's not accurate in some cases. If you have an outlet that was miswired um, from the 70s and they upgraded it to have a grounded receptacle on it, it's possible for the outlet to be wired to the point where the ground itself is sitting at 120 volts, but yet the tester tells you that it's all correct polarity. You'll get the, the correct two amber lights and no red light, when in fact anything that you plug into it will be, the, the body of it will be electrified to a full 120 volts with full amperage. So it's very, very dangerous condition. The industry doesn't seem to really know about it. This is something that I've turned to reverse polarity bootleg ground or RPBG. And I first wrote about this uh, for an article for Gary's website for his newsletter last year. And so he kind of broke the news on that. Um, and since then, um, this has now become quite an industry thing for inspectors around the country who said, I had no clue that that could even exist. So the places to look out for, let's say that you have an outlet, maybe in your garage or your workshop, and you go plug your RV into it. Without testing this, your entire RV could be electrified. Um, and that light will tell you it's okay, and it will appear to operate completely normally. Everything will seem to work. But anything plugged into it that has a grounded plug from a toaster to a guitar amp to your RV uh, could, in fact, create a deadly condition. Now, and obviously, obviously, if you have a very expensive meter, this is a ground loop uh, impedance tester. Impedance tester. Uh, if you have a very expensive piece of equipment, obviously that would find the, the issue as well, correct? No, it doesn't. That's the crazy thing. So if you look at this, this is basically a $300 tester that we use for checking outlets in you know, commercial buildings. Uh, if you plug this in, it will tell you that the polarity is okay and it appears that, that to think that everything is okay uh, when in fact the outlet has been completely reverse wired. Uh, this is also something that happens with um, with modern surge protectors. Will not find this. They won't discover it. Um, I've gone down the list of every single manufacturer from through Flute to Triplet to Amprobe to all of them who all thought that their gear would be able to um, discover this. And I said, I don't think so. Send me one. And they, they've all sent me demo units. I've sent them a video back saying, see, it won't. They call me up and they say, uh, nobody ever told us. So this is something you can test for very simply with um, basically a, a little um, non-contact voltage tester that you can get for $20, $25 in most any um, big box store or order them online. Um, and it's really as simple. Yeah, Gary's, everybody's got them. It's really as simple as turning it on. And if I were to point it at the RV, if the RV was electrified, this thing would beep from a foot or more away. In fact, I have a, a video of me electrifying a 40-foot RV. V, which is kind of cool, um, and uh, from 18 inches away, it's showing that that thing's electrified. So I, I think the key thing uh, that Gary and I have talked about a lot um, is if you feel a shock from anything, something is wrong. Even All, a little tingle. E right, even a little tingle yeah. tells you that something is wrong, and the fact that you've only gotten a tingle may be due to the fact that you're standing on dry ground at that point. But, you know, there are cases 
process of people being electrified standing in the wet grass and they and they step onto their metal step and and you be, you you are electrocuted now let me just make sure we determine we define the word electrocution electrocution means death by electricity so I have a lot of guys say I got electrocuted last night and I'm going really you're the ghost so you you can have a shock or you can have electrocution uh, we try to avoid both of them the shock is a little hint that something could happen next time and it could be you or a loved one your pet family members friends so if you feel a shock something is terribly wrong and even if this tester tells you that everything is right it's not these are still I think one of the best ways to be able to just double check and make sure that the bodies of the RVs or anything that you've plugged into um, are at close to ground potential which is really what you want so basically the problem isn't necessarily inside the RV typically it's with the power source more than anything else and you probably see this a lot when you go around to campgrounds where the source electrical box may be miswired or whatever and if you use your regular volt ohm meter or one of the three light testers you're really not fully testing the actual ground loop that's involved it could be a bootleg ground as Mike just explained or reverse polarity and and let's make this point as well in order to have a dangerous situation. You have to have two negative things happen at the same time. You can you can hap happily live with a uh, with a with a bootleg ground in some instances in an old home, for instance. Some of the old two wire houses were wired with a bootleg ground. But if you have reverse polarity at the same time, that's when it becomes a dangerous situation. So, Chris, in your in your experiences going around to campgrounds, uh, I don't know how prevalent this is, but I'm sure you've seen it. So obviously you know the value of using uh, you know, a non-contact proximity tester um, to check for this hot skin condition. Absolutely. We've run into this and uh, at the campgrounds it's not it hasn't been so, so much of a deal because they are putting in new 50 amp services. They've done that over the last 10-15 uh, uh, years so they've been upgrading their electrical systems and that's been okay. Where we run into and see that uh, more prevalently are at fairgrounds and exposition centers and things like that, where the electrical system is antiquated and the grounds just aren't uh, uh, wired correctly and whatnot. And so when I work on RVs there, you kneel down, you start to work on an RV, and the next thing you know, you've got a tingle from, you know, a problem. Mm -hmm. And it's not, like you said, it's not from the RV itself, but probably from the existing wiring system in the mm -hmm. facility. So there you go, folks. Just a little bit of a discussion about some of the, uh, the, the dangers you may encounter. And the bottom line is, before you plug your RV into any power source, always, we come to a consensus here, always measure the voltage, make sure it's within the proper range of the, of the voltage requirements of your RV, and then also verify the polarity of that voltage. So it's a two-step process before you plug your RV into any receptacle that you've never plugged into before. Guys, hey, I appreciate y'all being here. Thanks. Thanks for hosting us, and we'll see you somewhere down the road.